Hi, this is Kendall Boyson, professional life and recovery coach, and you're listening to Encouragementology, the practice of instilling hope. Hi there. Thanks for joining me. On this show, we are weighing out our options, laying it all in front of us because guess what? You have the power to choose. Choices, choices, choices. Everything you say and do is a choice. Most seem to come automatically without much or any thought at all. And others require laboring and let's be honest, taking a risk. The point is, you possess the power, and just knowing that is so empowering. What if you were more mindful of this revelation? Would it change the way you attack your day? It starts before you even pop your eyes open. You choose your schedule, and even if your alarm didn't go off, you lucky little devil, your body chose to wake up. Let's follow this power throughout your day the seasons of your life, and the future you've yet to tap into. Ready to make the choice that's right for you? For the title of this show, I featured surviving or thriving, joy and happiness. But the options are endless when it comes to the choices you have in front of you. My intention was to be that friendly reminder that where you are today, how you feel, and what you're facing is a choice. Now, you may scoff and give me ample examples to the contrary, but hear me out. You have the choice of how you interpret your circumstances and how you respond. You have a choice in how you overcome and if you repeat bad behavior. You have a choice of what you consume and what you regurgitate. Now, at a high level, that's pretty powerful. What are you facing today that has you in a quandary? Where do you feel helpless or hopeless? How are you going to change your circumstances? For me, throwing up my hands and quitting is not an option. That doesn't mean I don't give in on things that aren't working, but I never give up on my goals and dreams. I don't give up on me. You might have to sit with some of these ideas to see the difference, but even though they appear ever so slight, they are huge. Giving up and giving in couldn't be more opposite and has nothing to do with strength or ego. Knowing yourself, strengths, and weaknesses means you know when you need to head in a new direction with a new approach. It's your choice. Let's take a small detour as we explore the difference between these two similar phrases that often get interchanged. It's important and in many cases a huge decision you're faced with. ExploringYourMind.com gives us some insight in an article they featured giving up versus knowing when to quit. There are stories, relationships, and connections that have given all they have to give. They're like a rope that has been pulled too tight or a comment trying to escape that we can't hold on to. They're like a train leaving on schedule that we can't stop. Letting these things go is not an act of cowardness or surrender. Knowing when to quit is an act of bravery. If there's something we aren't prepared for, it's distancing ourselves from people who are significant in our lives. It is difficult for us to stop investing time and energy into a project or job that was important to us until very recently. We say we aren't prepared because our brain is very resistant to change. Any kind of break from routine or habit is a leap into the unknown that generates fear in this wonderful and sophisticated organ of ours. Pointing to my head. That's enough, cried the heart. For once, he and the brain agreed on something. The brain's inclination to always keep us in the same place, doing the same thing with the same people, makes it difficult to leave our comfort zone. This almost obsessive attachment to what we know makes us say things like, I'll stick it out a little longer. 
I'll just wait a bit longer to see if things change. Does that sound familiar? One thing we already know for sure is that certain changes never come. Sometimes waiting a bit longer means waiting too long. We've been raised with the classic and unjustifiable idea that what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. We've been taught that abandoning something or someone means that we've given up and our will is broken. Now, looking past the problem, we see complete and crushing unhappiness. This is something physical. It simply robs us of air and life. Leaving these types of situations behind, at least for a while, is undoubtedly a courageous and healthy act. When we trip, fall, and hurt ourselves, we don't think twice about getting better. We learn to avoid the dangerous parts of the sidewalk. Why don't we do the same thing with our relationships? Why don't we avoid situations that have caused us pain or suffering? Hmm, this simple question has an answer with aspects as complex as they are delicate. In the first place, in real life, we don't deal with sidewalks full of holes or paths covered in rocks. We know that these metaphors are overused, but the problem is that real life dangers are never so easy to accurately identify. We don't wear signs advertising what we are like, how we love, or what intentions we have. Secondly, it's important to remember that we are creatures with many needs, attachment, belonging, community, free time, sexuality, friendship, work, and lastly, change. People are dynamic by nature. We mutate. These very human variables force us to take these leaps into the unknown. We take these risks so we can try something new, have different experiences, and and even sometimes for survival. On occasion, we give the least deserving people second and third chances because our brain is pro-social. It will always value connection over distance and the known over the unknown. All that helps us to understand why it's so difficult for us to know when something has crossed the line. We have trouble identifying when the costs far outweigh the benefits and when our own mind acts like our enemy, whispering, don't give up, don't give in. (sighs) Haven't you heard that over and over? We need to assimilate something basic and essential into our brain. When we leave something behind that is harmful and making us unhappy, we aren't giving up. We're surviving. Finding our sweet spot is like finding our own balance, our psychological and emotional homeostasis. It's all about knowing what is best for ourselves at all times. It is worth mentioning that this ability isn't intuitive. It is objective, self-learning, acquired through experience, observation, and reflection on our own lives, learning from our successes, and guess what? Our mistakes. Nothing is enough for the man to whom enough is too little. That was from Epicurus. The sweet spot is when everything we're doing and achieving is beneficial and satisfying. Hmm, the sweet spot. That sounds amazing. But the moment that stress, bewilderment, fears, tears, or extreme exhaustion enters the scene, we've crossed over to the bitter spot, an unhealthy space that we should leave as soon as possible. Bewilderment, fears, tears, or extreme exhaustion exhaustion. This simple strategy can be applied in any situation in our lives. Finding the sweet spot is an act of wisdom. It's a personal tool that helps us understand that everything in life has its limit and knowing when to quit isn't the same as giving up. It is understanding what and where our limits are. 
We're talking about the line that separates happiness from unhappiness, bitterness from opportunities. It's all such a delicate balance, isn't it? When you say things like surviving or thriving, you might think it's an all or nothing state of being. I do tend to be a very black and white, all or nothing kind of person. At least the old me struggled hard with this concept. Part of learning when to give in is learning there are varying degrees of success and happiness. You might not win the race, but you won the feeling of accomplishment or the dedication it took to prepare and the health benefits from pushing yourself. You might not be ecstatic every day, but you did find multiple reasons to smile and felt joy in your heart. Finding the balance can help you with perspective and avoiding the highs and lows that come with the all-or-nothing approach. When there is only winning or losing, then it's much easier to throw in the towel. If you can uncover and collect elements of satisfaction, then no matter what you do, you're satisfied. Remember, it's a choice. I want you to spend a little bit of time thinking about that concept Giving in versus giving up, right? Learning, not quitting and running away, but learning when enough is enough, when you might need to modify your approach. Also, this all or nothing approach, black or white, but what are the varying degrees of gray that you could introduce into your mindset? Well, are you ready to tap into the power you possess? AbundanceandHappiness.com walks us through this process in their article, Your Power to Choose. We've each been provided with a number of incredible and irrevocable gifts that are oftentimes overlooked and or taken for granted. One of the most incredible gifts provides to you, me, and everyone else on this planet the power to choose. What we choose, we receive unconditionally. As true as that is, it's a gift that many unknowingly and unintentionally even choose to utilize unconsciously. At best, we utilize this power based on a very shallow and superficial understanding of the power each of us have been given. We remain unaware of how and why our every thought molds, shapes, and impacts At varying degrees, every event, every condition, and every circumstance we experience in life. This is why so many perceive themselves as being powerless. Powerless to create desirable change. It's why so many view themselves and others as victims or creatures of circumstances rather than what we all truly are, which is creators of circumstance. Our power to choose individually is quite obvious to most, but it's often limited to and by a surface level view of life. We utilize what could be referred to as a surface level form of power. Every minute of every day, as we make choices about what to think, what to say, where we work, what to eat, the clothes we wear, and when to go to bed. These common on-the-surface examples of how we exercise our power to choose are the obvious conscious choices that we make on a day-to-day basis. But a fact that many overlook is that the vast majority are using their power to choose unconsciously. This is below our conscious awareness. Each and every minute of every day, whether on a conscious or subconscious level, Both individual and collectively, we are choosing the inevitable outcomes that reveal themselves as tangible and measurable results. Although we're well aware of our conscious choices, it's more times than not the unconscious choices that lead to producing our less than desired results, regardless of how badly we may claim to want something better. So think about that for a moment. Your unconscious choices 
are producing most of your less than desired results. Hmm. Who is ready for a wake-up call? Unbeknownst to many, wanting is a choice, albeit an unconscious one, that can and often does keep us seemingly trapped in this very state of wanting. The fact is, wanting better results is tangible evidence of a lack of understanding regarding our power to choose, as well as the power those choices have in molding and shaping our lives. But we can learn to utilize our power to choose in such a way that makes wanting obsolete. We want only because we have little to no understanding that we're using our power to choose in such a way that creates and sustains a seemingly inescapable cycle of want. Does that make sense? The wanting is keeping us trapped by preventing us from understanding that we have the power to choose. We want because we've learned and had a tendency to make excuses, to point fingers and blame something or someone in the world out there for our less than desired results. In essence, we unconsciously utilize our power to choose, to relinquish our power rather than embrace it. If we honestly believe That what happens in our lives is the result of something or someone out there. What power do we have to change it? With each of the choices that you make individually comes the need for accepting responsibility for what you experience in your life, regardless of what those experiences entail. You have been given the power to choose the events of the day for yourself and each and every one of these obvious conscious surface level choices are a direct reflection of the outcomes that you experience in life on a day-to-day basis. We all agree on that, right? But your power to choose and the results that you experience begin and extend well beyond the tangible and measurable Each of the obvious conscious surface level choices we make find their root and the quality of them is determined by a not so obvious part of us that few are aware of, our subconscious thought process. Now, I know this sounds like so many different levels and that we're just mincing words, but stay with me. What if you discovered that, contrary to what so many are taught and have been led to believe regarding themselves, their potential, and what's truly available to each of us, that you have the power to choose how to construct every aspect of your life. And these moment-by-moment choices extend well beyond the obvious day-to-day conscious choices. Wouldn't that be empowering? What if you were introduced to the idea that you could use your power to choose in a more conscious, intentional, purposeful, and meaningful way, enabling and empowering you to determine exactly how much money you made, the quality of the relationships you attract, and the quality of health? Hmm. What if you found that you'd have the power to choose without limitation Any form, whether it be your career, what kind of car you drive, the kind of home you live in, and how much time you could spend with those you love. Would you believe it? If you've adopted and adhered to the self-limiting mindset of the vast majority, the answer would be no. That's precisely why those who enjoy and experience the kind of quality of life that nearly everyone claims to want are in what would be referred to as a minority class. But make no mistake, regardless of how you answered that question and whether you currently believe it or not, it's far more than possible. It's your birthright. No question, learning how to choose consciously Is the road less traveled?
Those who choose this less traveled path simply choose to utilize the irrevocable gift we've each been provided and make a decision to become keenly and consciously aware of what they're choosing. This enables us to choose in a more conscious and intentional kind of way. The fact is, the choices you are and have been making to this point, both conscious and unconscious, are precisely what is creating, has created, and will continue creating the kind of quality of life that you are, have been, and will continue to experience. Unless you know that new choices need to be made. We're covering all of our bases here. The idea is that you have the power to choose, and what you choose is up to you. We can consciously want something, yet be unconsciously sabotaging what it is that we want. Your life and the events, conditions, and circumstances are nothing more than a mirrored reflection of the mindset that you choose to hold and the predominant thought process that you choose, again, choose to determine the kind of quality of your tangible results. As true as that is, the choices which are producing your future results go much deeper than the obvious day-to-day choices relating to physical activities that you engage in, which most perceive as being the ultimate cause of these outcomes, what you're actually physically doing. But your power to choose entails much more than that, much, much more. To fully grasp and understand how to begin consciously, intentionally, and consistently creating desired outcomes and consciously utilizing your true power is as simple as choosing to take a deeper look at the underlying and oftentimes overlooked cause of every event, every condition, every circumstance that shows up in your life. That extends well beyond the physical and finite. Everything physical and finite begins as something not physical at all. This non-physical thing is called consciousness. This deeper look without fail leads to becoming keenly aware of the quality of your consciousness at the deepest levels. You could refer to this as the seed level. Have I planted a bit of a seed? Something to nurture, research. Dig a little deeper in. As with everything on Encouragementology, it's just ideas. It's positive alternatives to life's little challenges. What if you were in control? You were in the captain's chair of your own journey. You got to make those decisions. You charted out your course. You made educated decisions, not just autopilot, subconscious decisions. Should you find yourself experiencing less than desired outcomes, all that's required to enhance yours, whether it's physically, financially, relationally, emotionally, spiritually, is as simple as making a conscious choice to enhance your level of awareness regarding yourself and your true power. Isn't that what so much comes down to? Is just your awareness You know, if you're making knee-jerk reactions and you're on autopilot, if you can catch yourself in this, if you can question a choice you make, kind of, you know, peel it back to see where it came from. Was it an educated decision? Is it just something you fell into? You know, being aware of where you are and how you got there is so important. And actually, there's no way you can change it without becoming more aware. Contrary to the beliefs that many hold, a majority mindset that many have adopted and choose to adhere to is life is not a random and chaotic unfolding of events. <laughs> For every effect, there exists a cause. Although many utilize their power to choose in such a way they never look deeply enough to discover the true cause. That's why there's randomness chaos. There are no random events, conditions, or circumstances in life. There are no such thing as lucky people. (laughs) What is perceived as luck is an alignment of consciousness that harmonizes with the desired result. 
You've been provided with the power to choose how you live and what you experience in your life. You have the ability to choose consciously as well as the ability to choose unconsciously. Whichever you choose will consistently provide and deliver intangible and measurable form, a quality of life that harmonizes with your individual choices unconditionally, regardless of what you may have been previously taught and led to believe to this point. The choices that you're currently and consistently making every day, which are the result of your previous programming and conditioning, are the same choices that are determining your current results and are the same choices that you have the power to change whenever you choose to do so to create an entirely new life for yourself. When do you want it? When do you want this new life? When do you want to wake up and take responsibility for where you are and where you're going? When do you want to control what goes into your mind, what stays, what goes? What drives your next move? It's not a choice that you have to make. It's not a choice that the majority of people make. But it's a choice you can make. Choices, choices, choices. About seven years ago, I decided I made a choice to do things differently, to really concentrate on this journey of self-discovery, to learn the power that I possessed at a time I felt the most hopeless, investing all my energy, all of my efforts into other people who really didn't want or need my help, but I was convinced that I could do something worthwhile. But what I found is I'm worthwhile. I'm worth the time and the attention And so I made a choice to put myself, my needs, my desires in learning more about myself first. It's an awareness. Boy, did I tap in on some things I wasn't prepared for. Some things I found as strengths that were actually weaknesses and vice versa. I'm not done yet. It is a journey. So every day is different, but I'm committed I've made the choice and the commitment to continue this journey, forever digging, exploring, sharing, learning, and growing. You have the power to choose to investigate further and determine for yourself just how powerfully creative you are, as well as the choice to remain as you are and continue to create the same results as you did before. Now, you might be saying, yeah, but, hmm, these yeah, buts, many as they are, are understandable based on the previous subconscious programming received by so many, but once introduced into the possibility of new hope, at the core are merely conscious choices to make excuses for not exploring the possibilities. Life doesn't give us what we want. Life gives us what we choose for ourselves. Your power to choose is an inalienable gift provided to you. And whatever choices you make without fail determine what you get. Now that may sound harsh to some, but I can reassure you that I share it with the greatest amount of empathy, compassion, and caring. One thing is certain. If nothing changes, nothing changes. It's as simple and complex as utilizing your power to choose to begin consciously choosing your path. Should you find that old self-limiting belief no longer serves you and are in some way limiting your ability to consciously create your heartfelt desires and reach your true potential, you have the power to choose to eliminate them and begin to experience the things that you desire in your life. Not challenging these beliefs is accepting them, but you can choose a different path. You have the power to choose to explore and discover your inherent greatness and your creative ability, and you have the power to choose to do nothing. 
You choose. Choices, choices, choices. I think I've said the word choose and choice. Oh, I can't even count. Hopefully it's sinking in a little bit. You have a lot of options. So what do you do? How do you weigh out all these options? You know, we talked about not making knee-jerk, unconscious decisions, but being more aware and mindful. So how do we weigh out our options? What's the best route? Well, I like to talk to people. I like to listen to people. I like to bounce ideas and brainstorm. Matt would say I like to make a lot of lists. And that's probably true. But I like to think it out that way. I'm also a very visual learner. So I have to paint pictures or tell stories and you know, really come up with a good idea. Well, at brainfacts.org... I found some more ideas on how to weigh out our options. This can come from choosing a career to choosing a breakfast cereal. Human life is full of decisions. But how does our brain decide between Count Chocula or Fruity Pebbles when we go to the grocery store? Even with routine choices, decision making is a complex task that involves assessing the information we have. There are so many kinds of cereal, right? Have you been to the grocery store lately? Well, determining our choices, like which cereal brand do I even like, examining our past experience with these choices, like I remember liking Fruity Pebbles as a kid, and ultimately picking what we think is our best option are the steps. Scientists have come up ways to study this topic in the lab using a common method called two alternative forced choices. The task consists of a series of very simple decisions. On every trial, the participant has to make a choice between two options, like different shapes, and then they either get a small reward or they don't. Based on the rewards, the participants learn the value of options that were not inherently valuable, and we can study their choices as they learn which options are the better ones. This simple task can be used in different species, including rodents and non-human primates. In the lab, rats are trained to do similar versions of the same task. Using eye tracking software, the rats can just look at their choice without moving other parts of their body, making it easier to measure brain activity or manipulate neural circuits. This type of study has helped identify specific brain regions associated with making decisions. The brain makes sense of the world by using all available information, including senses, emotions, instincts, and remembered experiences. For example, if a brain injury or lesion has damaged the orbital frontal cortex, that's important for emotional processing, or the anterior cingulate cortex, which is critical for learning, the test subject performs poorly at evaluating the quality of the choices offered, as well as doing poorly at actually making decisions. These brain regions are important for higher order cognition, and are thought to draw on all available resources like sensory input, memories, and emotions to weigh the options and make a decision. See, it's really not a knee-jerk. Research also shows how memories influence decision-making. Daphne Shohami, who studies learning, memory, and decision-making at Columbia University, examined the role of the hippocampus, a region of the brain integrally involved in forming and retrieving memories. By tracking the brain activity of people performing a forced choice task, as well as studying patients with damage to the hippocampus, her team demonstrated that the hippocampus is required for this kind of decision-making. When trying to determine the best choice, it makes sense that people draw on memories to recall earlier trials and which options will provide the greatest reward. The best predictor about the outcome of any particular choice is knowledge about and memory for what happened last time. For many decisions, this seemingly simple idea is actually complex and mysterious because the circumstances for making decisions you know, change. Our situation change. We're different. We can't always just go on the path. For such decisions, Shohami says we need to be able to make predictions about the future in a flexible way. 
taking the past into account, but using it to make flexible inferences about the future. Just as you've been given the free will and power to choose what you eat, what clothes you wear, etc., you've been given the power to choose and, if necessary, elevate your beliefs about yourself, your life, and the creative power provided to you. This is not a common choice. It is a choice that without fail will result in enabling and empowering you to begin attracting to yourself the ideas, events, conditions, circumstances, people, etc. to fulfill your most heartfelt desires. Your power is within you, but so many people look to the outside for change. They unconsciously utilize their power to choose and engage in physical activity, attempting to do, 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 to do themselves into a life of abundance. They overlook the most crucial aspect of creating that abundance, which begins on the inside. Utilizing your power to choose consciously and intentionally begins by deciding to take an inside approach to life. The inside-out approach is what is referred to as a short path to harmony. The short path consists of nothing more than choosing to become conscious of the underlying self-limiting and self-sabotaging beliefs that we've all been exposed to, we've all adopted at some point in our lives. These beliefs are acquired through a number of channels. Sometimes they're family Sometimes it's school. Maybe it's a group of friends. We exist in a belief-driven universe. Our perceptions determine our reality. The beliefs we have, most of which, again, are unconscious, determine how we feel about any given circumstances. We eventually interpret everything around us through these lenses that we've acquired based on these beliefs. This is where your power to choose consciously becomes so crucial. Choosing to become conscious of the beliefs that are creating how you feel determines that quality of what you say and do, which collectively determine the quality of your tangible and measurable results. Anything and everything you want is available to you, but you won't see it until you shift the perception, and eliminate the belief filters that keep you from seeing it. I hope you've picked up a different perspective on this show when it comes to choices. I hope you'll look at it differently. You deserve to take full control over your thoughts and actions. It will propel you in the direction you're looking for if you're mindful and aware of what you're choosing. If you want to share encouragementology with a friend who needs to know they are not alone in this journey of self-discovery, you can visit encouragementology.com or anywhere you stream your content to receive this episode and all others. Follow us on Facebook for additional encouragement throughout the week. So I challenge you, before you float downstream with the go with the flow attitude, Grab on to a passing branch and activate your power to choose your next course of action. Chart out new territory mentally, physically, and spiritually as you rediscover you. I know you can do it. Thank you for listening to Encouragementology with Kendall Boyson, where we find positive ways to handle some of life's challenges. Someone threw until the path was clear. That's when I found you, how I wound up here.